Meet Pierre de Fermat, the French mathematician known as the trailblazer of modern number theory. Alongside René Descartes, Fermat was a pioneering force in 17th century mathematics. He independently revolutionized analytic geometry, reshaped calculus with innovative methods for curves, and was a key figure in shaping probability theory through his correspondence with Blaise Pascal. Pierre de Fermat was born on August 17, 1601 in Beaumont de Lomen, France, in a mansion that's now a museum. His dad, Dominique Fermat, was a wealthy leather merchant, and held important positions in their town. Pierre went to the University of Orléans, and studied law. He later bought a role in a French court, and married Louise de Long. They had eight kids, five surviving to adulthood. Fermat loved languages, speaking six fluently. He was good at poetry, and often helped with fixing Greek texts. He was a lawyer by profession, but math was his passion. He sent his math ideas in letters to friends, sometimes without full proof. He contributed a lot to geometry, probability, numbers, and calculus. But he kept his work pretty private, leading to disagreements with other mathematicians like Descartes and Wallace. In his manuscript, Methodus ad discorrendum maximum ad minimum, circulated around 1636, Fermat laid the groundwork for analytic geometry. He developed methods for finding maxima, minima, and tangents to curves, akin to today's differential calculus, preceding Descartes' famous work. These ideas were published posthumously in 1679 in Ad locos planos et solidos isagoge, introduction to plane and solid loci. Here's the difference between Descartes and Fermat. Fermat kicked off by looking at an algebraic equation, and then figured out the geometric curve it represented. Descartes, on the other hand, began with geometric curves, and worked out the equations as one of their properties. This different approach meant, Descartes ended up handling more complex equations. He had to deal with tougher math, working through equations that had more terms and required new methods to solve them, especially those with higher degree equations. Later, Leonard Euler took this concept further. He was the first to dive deep into using coordinates to study curves and surfaces in space, building upon the foundation laid by Descartes and Fermat. Fermat also pioneered integral calculus, offering a method to some geometric series, later crucial to Newton, and Leibniz, in developing calculus. Fermat considered that the area between x equals 0 and x equals a, below the curve y equals x to the power of n, and above the x-axis, to be approximated by circumscribed rectangles, where the width of each rectangle formed a geometric sequence. The divisions into which the interval is divided, from the right-hand side are made at x equals a, x equals a r, x equals a r squared, x equals a r cubed etc., where a, and r, are constants, with 0 less than r less than 1 is shown in the diagram. In number theory, Fermat explored Pell's equation, perfect numbers, amicable numbers, and what we now call Fermat numbers. His investigations led to Fermat's little theorem, and a factorization method. He's known for Fermat's right triangle theorem, and the two-square theorem. Fermat also collaborated with Blaise Pascal, contributing to the foundation of probability theory. They're considered joint founders based on their problem-solving correspondence in 1654. In physics, Fermat's principle of least time refined Euclid's idea, stating that light travels between points along the path of shortest time. 
This principle significantly influenced the historical development of the fundamental principle of least action in physics. While Pierre de Fermat made significant contributions across various mathematical domains, he's often remembered most for a tantalizing puzzle he left behind, Fermat's last theorem. Let's explore this enduring mystery in greater detail. Fermat's last theorem stands as one of the most tantalizing problems in mathematics. Pierre de Fermat wrote in the margin of his copy of Diophantus's Arithmetica that, he had found a truly marvelous proof for the theorem, stating that, for any integer value of, n, greater than 2, there are no three positive integers a, b, and c, that satisfy the equation a to the power of n plus b to the power of n is equal to c to the power of n. For example, if n equals 3, Fermat's last theorem states that no natural numbers x, y, and z, exist such that, x cubed plus y cubed equals z cubed which means, the sum of two cubes is not a cube. This statement remained unproven for centuries, and became a puzzle, that captivated mathematicians worldwide. Fermat's claim was famously inscribed in his copy of Diophantus, but without a proof, leading to intense speculation, and attempts by mathematicians over generations to validate, or disprove it. The theorem was particularly baffling, because it seemed simple, yet resisted all efforts at proof. Many mathematicians tried, and failed, to confirm Fermat's assertion. As time passed, it gained mythical status, with many believing that Fermat didn't have a proof, and perhaps made an error in his claim. It wasn't until 1994 that Sir Andrew Wiles, a British mathematician, presented a proof for Fermat's last theorem. His proof involved complex mathematical concepts from various fields, including modular forms, elliptic curves, and algebraic geometry. Wiles's proof finally resolved the centuries-old mystery, confirming that Fermat's claim was indeed true. Wiles's achievement in cracking Fermat's last theorem was a monumental moment in mathematical history, marking the end of an almost 400-year-old quest. Pierre de Fermat passed away in Castres, France, on January 12, 1665. His contributions to mathematics continue to inspire, and captivate mathematicians and enthusiasts alike, solidifying his place as one of the most influential mathematicians in history.